Handling Objections, part of the Sticky Sales series. Let's get this on the table straight away. Objections are a good thing. That's right, objections are a good thing. We're so conditioned to react to someone objecting to us, or more commonly, something we've said in everyday life, that we automatically retreat into one of the following modes, defensive, hostile, argumentative, or dismissive. Clearly, any one or combination of these reactions is not going to be conducive to your heroic efforts to close the sale. But you should be softly encouraging objections so that once they're addressed and removed, your customer will be certain in his decision to go with you. If there are no objections, then just embrace the fact and close the bloody thing. If and when your customer raises an objection, you must qualify it immediately. This will give you the time and opportunity to open the discussion and assess whether the stated objection is what concerns your customer. Respond with, what makes you say that? This will allow your customer to elaborate upon his concern and give you more information with which to handle the objection and close it off. Interestingly, it also places a microscopic seed of doubt about the validity of this objection in the customer's mind because you've expressed mild surprise at his question. This is a very subtle, sensitive indication, so you must be confident in your abilities to read the situation and to use the correct body language. An objection is often just a request for clarification, so don't be tempted to sell your product all over again. You should ask your customer why that is so and elaborate upon his concern. Respond with something like, I understand why that could be a concern for you. Could you tell me more about why that's the case and what's most important to you? Of course, you should never argue with your customer. He is fully entitled to raise his concerns, just as you are fully entitled to address them. Modern selling is all about working in consultation with your customer to achieve a common goal. Don't fight them and remember the golden rule in any relationship, the first to anger loses. A salesperson will naturally wish to conclude the sale after answering an objection. One of the old techniques was to respond to an objection with something like, if I can prove to you that's not the case, would you be happy to proceed with the order? But this method, the sharp angle close, is considered by some to be a little old hat and confrontational as it's applying pressure on the customer to commit. It is far better to acknowledge the objection, ask your customer to elaborate, what makes you say that, and respond professionally. You should then flush out any further objections by asking if there are any other elements that are worrying the customer. If you don't get them out there, they will come back to bite you later. You must demonstrate your respect and acknowledge the real nature of the objection. Make sure you write the objections down in your notebook and deal with them individually as they arise. When you're sure there are no more objections to come, verbally summarise the list and your responses back to your customer and move for a firm close. Something like, now that we've cleared up any concerns you may have had, are you in a position to go ahead? If you've judged your relationship and the situation correctly, your customer should be happy to progress. If he still procrastinates, and you should counter with something like, what's the one thing that's preventing you from placing this order? Let's clear that up now so we're both happy to move on. Be cool and treat objection handling as a joint attempt to find a reason to proceed. Don't try to be too clever with your response. You're a grown adult with good manners and highly developed intuition. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this job. Use your common sense and adopt a position where your whole persona signifies, how can we solve this together? You will be surprised how effective this small shift in attitude can be. Assuming that you've ticked all the technical and operational boxes, the most common objection will always be price. Unless he's just being a bit of a twonk, in which case you may want to reassess your target accounts, your customer is not being awkward, but must demonstrate to his business 
that he's negotiated the very best price and or cost savings. In the modern business environment, this is how he will earn his bonus, by hitting his key performance indicators or KPIs on a regular quarterly basis. However, you should be proud of your price and stand firm. The alternative is to devalue your own product, one that has been set at a fair market price based on years of experience and expertise in your sector. Also, by offering an immediate discount, your customer will get the impression that you are asking too high a price in the first place and a measure of trust can be lost. You're also taking money away from your children by reducing your commission potential. You should address the price objection immediately, but provide a get out or face save for your customer in the form of maintenance credit days, two days per quarter, for example, or priority response guarantees, two hour instead of four hour on Fridays and Mondays, or something similar that's easy to implement and has a low cost to you. But let's look at some of your options in response to the wonderful thing that is the price objection. He says it's too expensive. You say, compared to what? Or, why do you say that? Or, did we miss something? Or, how much will it cost you to do nothing? Or, is price the only thing that prevents you signing? Or, okay, so if price wasn't an issue, are you satisfied that this is the right product for you? Or, okay, so which part or element don't you want? All of these responses are designed to reinforce the value of your product to your customer, flush out any hidden objections, and for him to understand that a reduced price means a reduced product or service. Help him along with this. He has to ask after all, and he will then be able to justify his decision internally. A tricky one this, but it can work if you've developed an exceptional relationship with your customer. If you've bonded professionally and socially within reason during the sales process, you can sometimes use what we call the Roger Moore response, i.e. total silence, a raised eyebrow and a hint of a quizzical smile. When we've tried this, it's absolutely worked, with our customer eventually breaking the silence and saying something like, anyway, let's just get this going, shall we? It's not for the faint-hearted, but a beautiful thing when it comes off.